So we talked very briefly about global warming and that temperature of 0.6 degrees and how there was some uncertainty in that. Um, we need to learn how to write numbers in a way that reflects the precision with which those numbers are known. When we're counting things, like counting pennies, we can count these pennies, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are exactly seven pennies in the picture. Is there any uncertainty in that? Could, it, could there be eight, possibly, or six? No, there's seven. You can count them. They're discrete objects that you can count. So that can be counted exactly. But if we look at a gold bar, this is a 10 gram gold bar, pure gold, does it weigh exactly 10 grams? No, it doesn't. Because it, that was made, right? It's not a single object. Gram is a unit of, of weight or mass. It's not a counting unit. It's measured with something. Every measurement has some error, some uncertainty in it. So when we say it's 10 grams, um, how we write that number, 10 grams, depends on how well we know that number, how, how carefully it was measured. So for scientific numbers, we report them um, assuming that every digit is certain except for the last. The last digit in any scientific number is going to be an estimated digit. So the first digits, the first four digits in this number are certain, the last one is, is an estimate. So 45.872, if this was a measured quantity, we're certain that it's 45.87. This two at the end is an estimation. Might be a little higher, a little lower. It's close, but we're not positive about that. So the greater the precision of the measurement, the greater number of significant figures. So these are considered significant figures. All the certain digits in the first uncertain one. So if we look at a balance, we're weighing out this pretty blue powder here. And here I've zoomed in so we can see it a little better. So this is just like an ordinary little kitchen scale. And we're not going to look at the ounces side because in science, we use the metric system. So if you ever have a question, should I use inches or centimeters, it's always centimeters in this class. Inches, inches are stupid. I hope to convince you of that by the end of this quarter. OK, so here we're going to look at the grams. And this, this line is the line that's moving as we put more, more weight on the scale. And so we're finding where does this fit on, on, this, on these markings here. So this is 10 grams. That's zero grams. These little markings in here each represent one gram. So we see here that that line is between one gram and two grams. Do you see that? So this sample weighs at least one gram. So there's no uncertainty in the one. It's, it's right there on the lines. We're going to estimate the next digit. Because we can get some information by estimating between those two little lines. We can see that it's not halfway. It's not more than halfway. It's less than halfway. So you can kind of, in your mind, divide that tiny space into 10 or 5 and estimate how far it is. So we may estimate that as uh, 2 tenths of the way. And so we'll record that as 1.2 grams. The 2 here is an uncertain digit. It's an estimate. If you asked five different people to look at this and record the measurement, you would get some different answers. Some people might say, I think it's 1.1. Some might say it's 1.3. A lot of people might say it's 1.2. There would be differences of opinion, and that's OK. We want to include that uncertain digit because it does give us information, even though it's not certain. Any questions? This is a hard concept for people to get their mind around. Let's look at another one. So here's a different type of a balance. We're weighing a pistachio. And what we're looking at here is where this little line falls along these markings. 
And so this is zero grams, one gram, two gram. So obviously it's more than one gram, right? So you write down one. And then the little lines represent 0.1 gram. And we have lines there, and so we can see that it is between 1.2 and 1.3. There is no uncertainty in that. It is between those lines. I mean, there's just nice lines, right? I, I heard a comedian once talking about how he thought being a parking lot attendant or a valet might be a nice job because, you know, there's just very clear guidelines. You park the car between the lines. and You don't have to go home at night and worry about, well, maybe I could have gotten more compacts into the corner. No, you just put them in the spaces, right? That's what this is. It's just between the lines. It's 1.2 something. Okay, then, then the iffy part comes. You need to estimate. I call this reading between the lines. So you've, you've got everything straightened out by the lines, and then you need to go one more. So you look and you say, well, I think it's 0.6. Or you might say it's not 0 0.6, 0 0.06 or 0.05. It's halfway or it's 6 tenths of the way. And so record this as 1.26 grams. The last digit is uncertain. We'll be practicing this in lab, but this is a really important skill. So the way you know how many digits to put is you look and you see what do the smallest lines, what do the smallest large markings on this measuring device represent? Well, here are the smallest markings represent 0.1 gram. So that means I'm going to estimate the next decimal place. So this is the tenths place I'm going to estimate in the hundredths. So I've got 1.2, those are the certain digits, the, the six is the uncertain digit. Any questions? Let's try it. Here's a thermometer. Uh, this is in degrees Fahrenheit. That was breaking class. Um, so here we're, we're supposed to measure this. It's a backyard hot tub. So there's 100 degrees, and here's 110 degrees. So what do each of these individual small lines represent? One degree. So the smallest marking is one degree. That means we need to estimate to the tenths, right? So we find the mercury here, and this is 101, 102, 103. It's between 103 and 104. So we write down 103. There's no uncertainty there. Nobody can argue that it's not 103 something. So then we put a decimal point there, and then we estimate. So what do you think? Seven? Seven? So I've got 103.7, I heard 103.3, somebody might think well, 103.4. The 7 might be a little high, but I would not count that incorrect. And we should always put a unit on there, that's degrees Fahrenheit. So we could have a couple of different answers, that's okay. There's uncertainty in the last digit. You can't measure something and have it be exactly that. You measure something with a ruler. It may look like it's right in the line, but what if you took a microscope and zoomed in and zoomed in farther and farther and farther? There's going to be some uncertainty there. So how you record a measurement depends on the instrument that you use to measure that with. Any questions? So significant figures help us to record numbers correctly and then to be able, excuse me, to do um, calculations with those numbers and not come out with something ridiculous. So we've got to learn sig figs. So the first step is to learn how to count what is a significant figure, what is not. And so here are the rules. Um, the first rule is all non-zero digits are significant. So if we look at... Um, some numbers. Any digit that's not a zero is always counted as a significant figure. It's the zeros that are tricky. There's three kinds of zeros. There are interior zeros. These are the zeros that are between two numbers. So the, um, this would be an interior zero. That's an interior 
zero. They're stuck in the middle. Those are always counted. This one, 50.1, that's an interior zero. Always count those. Then we have trailing zeros, zeros that come at the end of a number. So here, 5.10, this zero is at the end. 500.0, these zeros come at the end. These are the trickiest ones because sometimes we count them and sometimes we don't. What makes us count them is if there's a decimal point. So these numbers have a written decimal point. And so we do count those zeros as significant digits. If we have trailing zeros um, with just in an implied decimal point, like 50,000, there's no decimal point written there. 10, there's no decimal point written. Mm -hmm. So the example is 5.10 and 500.0. And just as a reminder, the, the slides and the handouts are available on Canvas. And the lecture videos will be on, on YouTube before you go home today. So you can always go back and check there. So 50,000. We know where a decimal point would go, but it wasn't written. And so these zeros are not considered significant digits. They are important. They're necessary to hold the decimal places because if we didn't have those zeros, that would be five, and five is very different than 50,000, right? But they don't imply measurement, so they're not considered significant. And then we have leading zeros, zeros that come at the beginning of a number, like these zeros, 0. 0.0005. Those leading zeros are never considered significant figures. They only serve to locate the decimal point. 0. 0.0153, those zeros do not count. So we're going to go through this, and then we're going to do some examples. Then we also have exact numbers, like the, the pennies in that first slide. Exact numbers come about in a couple of ways. Um, exact counting of discrete objects. We could count the number of people in here. We could count the number of antelope heads on the wall in here. Does, does anybody think it's a little creepy that you've got all these stuffed animal heads looking at you? They're staring at me. I guess you don't have to look at them so much. This is going to be a little distracting. Anyway, we could count them. And there would be no uncertainty. You can count them. You know, how many fingers? Five fingers. Thumb is a finger. So that's one type of exact number. Integral numbers, integer, meaning whole numbers, that are part of an equation. So um, as an example, the um, diameter of a circle is 2 times the radius. This 2 is an exact number. The, the diameter is exactly 2 times the radius. Um, defined quantities. So how many inches in a foot? It's not a trick question. How many inches in a foot? 12, thank you. So 12 inches equals one foot. That is by definition. Those are exact numbers. There are exactly 12 inches in one foot. There are exactly 100 centimeters in a meter. So those are by definition. We're going to be talking about conversion factors. Some conversion factors are defined quantities, others are not, we'll get to that. Okay, so let's look at this example. Determine the number of significant figures in these numbers. So the first one is 58.31. How many significant figures? Four. That one should be fairly easy because there weren't any zeros. All non-zero digits are significant. So then we'll jump into one that's a little trickier. 0 0.00250. Three. So let's explain that. The zeros at the beginning don't count as significant figures. They are just there to locate the decimal point. The trailing zero, we have to ask ourselves, is there a written decimal point? Yes, there is. There's a decimal point up here. 
It doesn't matter where the decimal point is in the number. If there's an actual written decimal point, you count the trailing zeros. So that zero counts. We've got two non-zero digits and this zero at the end, so three significant figures. Here's a number in scientific notation, 2.7 times 10 to the third. That has two. So one of the really nice things about scientific notation is it takes all the non-significant zeros out. So we're not going to be looking at the exponential portion, the 10 to the power. That's your placeholding zeros. You're just going to look at the decimal part. All the digits in the decimal part will be significant. Because if there's a zero, it will be a trailing zero, and there will be a decimal point. Or it'll be a trapped zero, an interior zero. There will not be any trailing zeros without a decimal point. There won't be any leading zeros. So scientific notation is easier. What about this one? One centimeter is equal to 0 .01 meters. So I, I'm hearing one. If you're just looking at the numbers, it would be one. But is that a defined relationship? It is. One centimeter is exactly 1 one hundredth or 0 .01 meters. So that's an exact number. So how you answer that, how many significant figures, you could say that this is exact. Or for a number of significant figures, it would be an infinite number of significant figures because it's exact. How about 0 0.500? Three. That leading zero is not significant. They never are. And you'll notice, perhaps, that we always put a zero in front of a decimal point. We don't ever just start with a decimal point. Decimal points are very small, and they're easy to overlook. By putting a zero in front of them, then it calls attention to the decimal point. So that zero is a leading zero. These trailing zeros are significant because there's a decimal point. How about this number, 2,100? I'm hearing four and two. Those are trailing zeros. Is there a decimal point written in the number? No, they don't count. There's two sig figs in that. From the little noises, I, I gather that some of you are bothered by that. Well, let's explain what this means. So the significant figures are the certain digits and the first uncertain digit. So what that tells me is that this last significant figure is the uncertain digit. So if I was, I don't know, where would that be? Maybe in, maybe in Iowa, eastern Kansas? If I was telling you how many miles it is to Wichita, Kansas, and I said it was 2,100 miles. Does that mean I measured it exactly to the nearest mile? When I say 2,100, that's implying that there's some uncertainty here and that I'm giving you kind of an estimate 2,100 to the nearest 100 miles. I'm suggesting that it's between 2,000 and 2,200 miles, right? If I wrote 22, sorry, 2100, zero, zero, and I put a decimal point there, that would implicate that I'm giving this to the nearest one. That would tell me that this is our uncertain digit, and there's uncertainty in the ones place, and that that was measured much more carefully than this number of 2100. Sometimes when we talk about populations of people or large amounts of money, Instead of, instead of saying, you know, three, uh, five, zero, 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 zero. So that's, that's three million five hundred thousand dollars, right? Oftentimes you'll see something like that written as three point five million. This is actually a form of scientific notation. We see the word million, and we understand that that means 3.5 times 10 to the 6. Does that mean exactly $3,500,000? Probably not. 
it's probably roughly $3.5 million. Probably there's uncertainty in this hundred thousands place. So in science, we're very careful of how we write a number because we're communicating the precision with which that measurement was made. Any questions? <laughs>